Transcoding, direct play, and direct stream. These are the three types of streams your Plex Media Server uses to provide you with content. But what do they all mean? When building a media server or installing one on your daily use computer, one thing you should always consider is what kind of usage you're planning to have. In some previous videos, I outlined how to plan for your server based off of how many people will be using it at the same time. This method used a generic system of processor ratings that can serve to be useful, but doesn't really dive into the variables that you might encounter. This, of course, brings me to the topic of the three streaming options you have with Plex, each of them being used automatically depending on the client's abilities. Those abilities are determined by the hardware and the software used to access Plex. Let me explain. Plex Home Theater is the software of choice for ultimate compatibility. I'm not saying that it's the best option for convenience, at least for most people, but it does work the best overall. The reason is that it's the most developed and functional option for people to get the highest quality media playback with the least amount of resources to do it. Here's why. One of Plex's options for serving media is direct play. Direct play is exactly how it sounds. It takes the raw file and pushes it directly to the client without any kind of format or quality change. What this means for the average user is that direct play will put little to no strain on the media server itself. By design, the media server is only acting as a file host in this situation and allowing access to the requested files without any transcoding. Plex Home Theater is the best option for getting direct play almost all of the time. This is because it's installed on a regular computer and thus able to handle just about any type of file. Now, you should keep in mind that some file types are actually better than others for streaming, so your mileage may vary. In fact, to make things easier for you, you should make sure that all of your media is encoded in H.264 and contained in an MP4 or MKV file, but more on that in another video. Aside from the file format, another thing to consider is bandwidth. With Plex Home Theater willing to take on original file formats, you might need a lot of bandwidth to be able to stream it. Now, if everything is running on an internal network and not bottlenecked by any internet provider, then you probably won't need to worry about this. But if someone you know is running an HTPC or a home theater personal computer with the Plex home theater software installed on it and they're at a different location from you, then you better make sure that you have a high enough upload speed to feed them the raw file in real time. If not, then you will be forced to transcode the file even if they are using the Plex home theater software. So let's say, for example, that you have four home theater PCs running the Plex home theater software inside your home. If each one of those wanted to play a movie file that was in the standard file format, this means your media server would be able to serve each one of those clients with very little processing power. Of course, this is the perfect environment, and not everyone can or will do this, mainly because in order to build a home theater PC, you might need to spend a little more money, and you have to find a good remote control solution, which, again, costs more money. This brings me to my next option in serving media, direct stream. Direct stream is almost as good as direct play, but there is a small change. If you want to use something like, let's say a Roku, Fire TV, Xbox, or a PlayStation, then you will find out that each one of those handle different file containers natively. So let's say you have a Fire TV and it natively supports MP4 files encoded in H.264, but it can't stream MKV files. Now let's say you wanna watch a movie that's encoded in H.264, but it's in an MKV file. Well, assuming of course that you're on a local network and have plenty of bandwidth to stream it at full quality, your Plex media server will stream the movie file to your Fire TV by means of direct stream rather than direct play. In direct stream, the server will do an on-the-fly container change from MKV to MP4. This action of changing the container does require a little bit of processing, but not much. The reason is that the video itself is encoded in H.264, which the Fire TV can handle, but only the file type is wrong. And since the file type is only a container, and not the actual compression method, it's easy to change them back and forth. So in my last scenario where you had four HTPCs running Plex Home Theater and used almost no server resources to stream the files, this time let's assume that you have four Fire TVs. Each one wanting to play the same movie file, your server will have to work just a little bit to change a container for each Fire TV, but it will be able to handle them with ease. 
To throw some arbitrary numbers out there, just for example, serving four HTPCs might take up less than one or 2% of your server's processing power, while serving four Fire TVs might take five to 10%. In the grand scheme of things, this is really low and still a good situation to be in. Now, let's get to transcoding. Transcoding is the magical force that makes Plex the most user-friendly media serving software available today. The reason why is because it's capable of taking whatever file format you use for your media and changing the encoding and container to suit any format your client needs. I know that sounds complicated, but okay, well it is. However, Plex handles everything automatically and the only thing you need to worry about is how much processing power it takes to do it. Transcoding is the process of re-encoding a media file on the fly. This means that it will only re-encode the parts of the file that's needed to send over the network for playback. Because of this, as long as you have a decent processor, you won't be at full CPU usage at all time. You might spike to 100% usage for a few moments, but that will only happen every once in a while. Transcoding is actually pretty fine-tuned and efficient, so it only uses what it needs in the moment. As I pointed out before, this whole process can hog a lot of resources. So let's look at the situation where you have four devices trying to play a movie. Each device this time is different and incapable of direct play. For example, an iPad, an Android tablet, and a couple smartphones all off network and running with limited bandwidth. Your Plex media server will now need to transcode your movie file to not only a different file format, but also have to encode it to a lower quality and a resolution. Depending on your processor, you might be stuck at 90 to 100% CPU usage the whole time, and you could even run the risk of having the playback stutter every once in a while. Again, this all depends on your hardware. If you're running something like an X99 build with an SSD as your boot and Plex data drive, then you could probably handle 10 or more streams at the same time. But if if you're running like, I don't know, an i3 on a laptop, then you might only be able to get two or three streams at the same time. The point is, if you're planning out your needs, you should consider the clients you're going to use first. You can build a really cheap HTPC that will run Plex Home Theater off of it with spare parts that you might have laying around. It might not look very pretty, but it could still work. You might need to do this if you want to run Plex Media Server off of something like a store-bought NAS or a network-attached storage device. These devices are designed for serving files very specifically and usually don't come packed with a lot of processing power. They would work great if every client in your house was capable of direct play, but if only one person needed to transcode something, you might run into some problems. Let's recap. Direct play is when your client is capable of directly playing a media file natively without any change in container or encoding, such as Plex Home Theater on an HTPC. Direct stream is when your client can natively play the codec, but can't read the type or the file container, like MKV versus MP4 with an out-of-the-box stream box such as a Fire TV or Roku. Transcoding is when the client either needs a different codec, quality, or resolution to be able to play it, normally required for slow internet connections or smaller devices like tablets or smartphones. So that's all I have for you today. If you found this video useful or you liked it, go ahead and smash the like and subscribe button below. And as always, thanks for watching.